The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories simply aren't true without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control the truth. I filed on them in my own court, U.S. District Court in Common Law Remedy Federal Judiciary. I filed treason, kidnap, grand larceny on the sheriff of this county and the judge when they tried to put me in jail for 37 years, false charges. <laughs> I could take that shit off anybody, especially when we pay their salaries and they're supposed to work for us. Stay within your family unit, get out of debt as quick as you can if you're in debt, raise the garden, get out of the big cities. Don't drink the Kool-Aid, the fluoridated water, and, and uh, all that crap. They're forcing one world government. What we need to do, what, what we all need to do, and it ain't gonna happen, is stick together. United we stand, divided we fall. Because people people think that, uh, that the government's protecting us from Al-Qaeda. They are Al-Qaeda. The banking system is, is the same as the people on the, the head of the insurance companies. The pharmaceuticals, they're all in the same, they're all the same people, they're all in the same club. And it's a handful. And then you can read all the repressive laws. You can read the Federal Reserve Act and see what that's all about. The Social Security Act is evil. Children don't contract. When you, read, when you receive a Social Security account, Social Security number, it's in the hospital as a baby. <laughs> Your parents should not allow the hospital to allow a, 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 a sign a Social Security contract number because children don't contract. That's the way they hold you in your all cap letters straw man, your, your all cap letters corporate trade name, responsible to pay off the debt that they created and that we occur incurred. They own everybody, legally but unlawfully. If you look up the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto, it's US government to the letter. There's some US law backing every plank of the Communist Manifesto, a US law. Progressive income tax is communism. Uh, owning children and, 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 and Social Security for our future labor, our, our future slavery. Uh, indoctrinating our kids in a public school system. Property taxation and a couple others. Ten planks of the Communist Manifesto. 
This hasn't been a country since Lee surrendered to Grant. That's what the Civil War was about, making one world government, making slaves out of all of us. It was not about repealing slavery to the black folks. It was about making slaves out of all of us of all colors, doing business. When Lee surrendered to Grant, there was 600,000 dead people. The World Bank funded the Civil War. The Rothschild family line, the main banksters, the gangsters known as the banksters. The, Roth the Rothschild family line has been around for hundreds of years. They funded the so North and the South <laughs> to pit brother against brother, cousin against cousin, father against son, <laughs> state against state. We were United States of America, the country up to and prior to the Civil War. When Lee surrendered to Grant, it wouldn't have made any difference if Grant surrendered to Lee. We were in turmoil and chaos, in need of reconstruction, but we'll never be United States of America again. It's over. Unless we, unless we just demand that, that we need to get our... See, the Constitution don't exist unless you enact it for yourself. That's part of the plan, too. It was suspended in 1935 by Roosevelt with the War Powers Act and the Social Security Act. And, and, Pup, and uh, Bush and Obama use it to this day called uh, uh, executive privilege. Right now, Obama and Eric Holder, U.S. Attorney General, are in contempt of Congress, should be impeached and deported. Eric Holder wouldn't divulge any information about what he knew on Operation Fast and Furious, where the ATF was selling sold weapons, probably still selling weapons to the Mexican drug lords mm -hmm. to kill their people and our people toward gun control. I wouldn't be surprised that that shooter up at the Ar Arvada, Aurora, in that uh, theater where they were showing the, the new uh, Batman, if he wasn't trained to go in there and kill them people toward gun control, trained by Al Qaeda, it's Al Qaeda. Wake up! Send that tape to them bastards. They don't scare me. Put it on YouTube video. They don't. They don't intimidate me. They don't scare me. I'm not afraid of the cops. If a person's got an IQ much over 105, they're overqualified to be a cop. They don't want no free thinker, just told what to do and ask no questions. Revenue collectors after the fact. And what were a lot of cops? Not all of them, but a lot of them bullied as kids, so they run around with a gun on the hip. They're no more than thugs and bullies. There's a lot of innocent people in jail that some lawyer, some lying sack of shit lawyer, Intimidate them to plea bargain to something they didn't even do, so they wouldn't spend so so they so some jury wouldn't sentence them, and in fact they're innocent. DNA has pro proven a lot of that. They're having to turn a bunch of them loose. They even got black, colored people in Angola, Louisiana, Angola prison. They've been in solitary over 40 years in a six by eight by 12 foot room. But we might as well re-elect Obama. I'll tell you why. The enemy we know is better than just having to learn a new enemy like Romney. They're all our enemy. They don't, they don't care about the people. Somebody made a plea to Obama and Romney to think about your children. Think about this uh, raping the planet with these big corporations. Uh, oil spills and, and, and uh, global warming brought on my man, carbon fuels. Obama, Obama and Romney's children are fine. They got all the money in the world. They could get they can eat the best of foods and keep their immune system up. Obama and Romney don't give a shit about our children. They got blood on their hands. People say, well, you want to be king of this castle? Hell no, there ain't no honor in being a president or a king. I'm the peon. I'm the castle builder. I got integrity. I ain't got blood on my hands. I do this by myself. My, not my dad or nobody before me. This is the world's biggest one-man project. And I'm just as newsworthy as Bradley Wiggins or John Alway or Arnold's, the world's biggest weightlifting trophy with no anabolic steroids. All and natural. Olympic gold medal every day, not just once every four years. I'm newsworthy for a good reason for a good reason. I'm not murdering nobody. And I'm no criminal politician. I don't sell out. I'm just getting a good start. The government's going to comply to all this. This time the government has no choice in the matter.
I'm a rusty razor, mama. Won't cut your mare. She's a real I just wanted a place in the mountains away from Pablo. When I was a kid, my dad was happy with barbecuing in the backyard, drinking beer and all that. He never come to the mountains. I just looked, I'd look west to see the Blue Mountains and they were mysterious to me. It was all timber, the highway was gravel, uh, no tourism, a few ranchers, stuff like that. I started the Stone Cottage in, in, uh, in 69 after 10 years of groundwork, wheelbarrow and shovel, my dad and I. People said the rock work looked like a castle, so long about uh, 1972 officially the name change of Bishop Castle. This is probably the only true castle left in the world as far as a castle because it's been besieged by enemies. The state highway department trying to stop the highway signs, the Forest Service trying to stop me from hauling rock, big money, big shots with their hands in their pockets saying, what's the point of all this? And it, it's under siege, it's a true castle. I wanted it open free so the poor people, everybody could use it equally. I went up to Seven Falls, a tourist attraction one time at, uh, was a young teenager with some family from uh, Indiana or something, and I was climbing trails, I got up the cliffs and all the loud people, will the young man on the cliff please come down? And it costs a bunch of money to get in there and all that, I thought bullshit on this, I'm going to build my own tourist attraction. And that's how it basically got started. Dr. Evermore uh, is a, a creative character that fits around the time of around 1890. Here in America, we had great wizards. The logical stuff was a gentleman by the name of uh, Thomas Edison, but nothing compared to Nicholas Tesla. Uh, this Dr. Evermore character came out of ancient England, and as he got older, he uh, decided that he'd like to build this machine. Uh, the actual construction of the forever trying, as you see it out there at this point, it's not completely with all the copper and stuff on it. Uh, that took about three years. You would have that idea of uh, perpetuating yourself back in the was on a magnetic lightning force beam inside the glass, all inside the copper egg. Along with it, you got to have a telescope for the Doughty Thomas to see if he made it there. Oh, we have, a, you know, lots of sculptures, uh, but they're mostly all done in a, a fantasy level of thought. I mean, you know, if it's a bird, it really is more of a, a fantasy element. Uh, Pre-existing parts that came from the Industrial Revolution so the shape of form is like a little treasure buried within a bigger structure. I don't know what kind of name you want me to tell you, but my uh, given name is uh, Thomas Owen Avery, and I am uh, Dr. Evermore, who is the time binder, who believes in putting things together. <laughs> There's no plans ever was anywhere on anything. Step it right. Here is my happenstance, my bored, ungodly circumstance, my border crossing ignorance, and I got to step it right. Maybe one of these days my ego won't mean that much to me. I could say I'm, I'm truly doing it in the honor and glory of God. I say that now, but I also say I'm doing it in the honor and glory of Jim Bishop. If I didn't say that, I'd be a liar and a hypocrite. I, I hook a, a, a cable to a pickup truck, I drive the truck backwards so I can watch the load going up, and I use cables to pull these pickup trucks. There's no cranes, no money, not a penny owed on it, tax exempt but no lawyers. 
the Bishop Castle Foundation Newborn Heart Surgery and the Bishop Castle Not-for-Profit Corporation. I consider this the only true castle left in the world. Why is that? This is the, uh, Paul, this is the only true castle in the world because all of the other castles are historic only. They all lost two battles. They lost the gunpowder battering ram cannonball battle. And in more recent, recent modern times, they lost the battle to the courts, statutes, zoning, laws, rules, regulations. The rich people own them. The poor people get no good out of them. They all lost the battle. This is the only true under siege winning castle in the world. And I don't have no enemies. Folks from the mountain kind of tend to understand each other. And uh, this, things go, things are understood without being said a lot of times. And um, like I said, I really wasn't in a financial position back then to help with the donations because that's how Jim keeps the castle running. Uh, so I told him, hey, you know, um, I really can't put any money in your donation box, but you know, I'm able to help out by, you know, taking care of you. And then he says, would you do it for my wife too? I said, sure. So then her and his wife and I became really good friends. I'm Phoebe Bishop, Jim Bishop's wife. I think it would be safer to ask what I don't do at the castle. I don't build the castle. I do everything else. Run the gift shop, chop firewood, haul water, um, cleaned snow, uh, maintained the house, built things, you know, made it possible so that Jimmy could have his fun. He uh, is a perfect example of what one person can do if they really, really set their mind to it. We all have that capability within us, um, but very few of us are driven to actually push ourselves into doing something extraordinary. And that's just what he is. He's just an ordinary person doing extraordinary things. The first time Jim did anything that convinced me that he was meant for this, this was his destiny, was when he put the first two or three wrought iron roof trusses up. The snow was so heavy, the fog was so thick, that standing out in the yard you couldn't see above my knees. It, that's how thick it was. So looking up, 70 feet in the air, <laughs> I couldn't see nothing. If I couldn't see in front of my face, how could I see that far? The next morning, and, and he was up there, putting up those wrought iron roof trusses, the first three, that didn't have rock work, didn't have nothing to attach to. Next morning we get up, beautiful blue skies. Oh, the mountains was gorgeous with snow went outside to look at what he had done, and I just stood there in awe. And I said, how did you do that? He says, you know, I don't even know. He says, it just went into place. And I says, you know, that's proof to me that God has a hand down with a sky hook holding you up, and this is what's meant to be. Well, most of us thought, <laughs> okay, I, I tease Jim because I tell him, I says, you know, back when you first started this thing, we thought you were crazy. And uh, now we're pretty convinced you are. <laughs> and um, it, uh, he, you know how when you, when you start on something and you kind of get tired of it after a while, uh, he has a drive inside him that um, when he sets his mind to it, he, he sees way down the road. And um, the obstacles are only things that um, galvanizes him and pushes him to try even harder. And um, most of us didn't pay much attention, kind of joked about it and kind of laughed it off. But as we saw it develop through the years, um, we'd stop and, and take a real close look and say, hey, you know, he's really doing this thing. Okay, I'm Lady Eleanor Every, and I'm the other half of Tom. We build it together. He designs. Um, I'm the other end that holds the piece for him, or things like that. Run the park, we have tour groups, paint groups, um, a lot of different things. With the park, it was started under total depression. And the more we worked on it, the more the tears went away, and it just built up. Now, I just do not know what ever could compare to this. And they can bring people and they can sit down on the grass, they can they bring their artwork, they'll paint while they're here. Uh, 
and they can do just about anything they want. Where, when you go to a museum or that, you're locked into looking at the piece. That's it. Here, you're pretty, pretty well on your own. You can do a lot. It's a park that um, nobody's any better than anybody else. It doesn't matter how you're dressed. Just come as you are. And uh, it, it's been like that from day one. He's always worked with history. And we've got two children, two boys, 25-year-old, 41-year-old. The 41-year-old grew up with Tom, taking everything apart, going to all the wrecking jobs, and really learning all of that. Oh, I'm Thayer. Thayer Every. Um, happen to be Dr. Evermore's son. Uh, I don't claim to be an artist. I don't want a title. <laughs> what, why is that? I like to uh, keep away from stereotypes. I'm not in the junk business. I'm not a junk man. I'm not a truck driver. I'm not a crane operator. But I am a special service man. I cover it all. You look at two pieces of scrap metal that look alike and they'll say scrap it and we say that's art. We, anybody could haul the stuff in and get melted down again and that. But as you can see, we got, I don't know, several thousand ton of material scattered that uh, is set aside for future use. But we may have gotten a little carried away. <laughs> you only have so much, so much time. And uh, you, know, you see that with my dad, he's got a lot of ideas on the burner. And he just doesn't have the time to get, get everything done that he wants to do. What do you think it is that attracts you here? Why do you think people come here from all over? Um, I think a couple of things. It's the unusualness of what he's designed. I think maybe he ran out of challenges and he just wanted to be more creative. You know, he's, he can't scrap everything. You know, because then what do you got? We just got new stuff to look at all the time. You know, here he's, you're, you're making stuff out of... Uh, pieces that people have thrown away, got rid of, making something from nothing always. That's basically what we've done all the time. And uh, it's it's been interesting. Oh, I can remember stuff back to four or five years old. Oh, yes. So. Mm -hmm. See, Tom would make us go on the wrecking jobs, and I'd have to bundle up the children in the car, and we'd sit there for eight hours. Mm -hmm. And if, the, if he came into a load with, in Fort Atkinson, um, he'd give me a call, and I'd have to bundle the kids up, mm -hmm. and we'd have to go sit there at 12 o'clock at night to pick Tom up. And that was our path. We always worked together. Always together. Yeah, I'm walking over now to the uh, 116 scale model of the castle. Uh, it ain't, it ain't uh, I don't follow the model, it's just a promotional device. The, the real thing's actually getting bigger than this. The, uh, the towers are getting taller. This don't have the dragon on the front. I'll, uh, I'll fix this up again, refurnish it and fix it all up. But I'm just a busy man. I'm, I'm, I work for a living in Pueblo. I'm, I'm up here doing interviews. I'm up here hauling rock and building the castle and trying to pay bills and trying to make a living. And there's only so much one, one, so much, so much one man can do. And uh, I get it done though, cause I, you know, if you want to do something right, do it yourself. That's the best way. That's the way I look at it. This is the uh, step buttress. The reason I got buttresses, I, I, I had a little paranoia about the thing falling down. There's no way it can fall down because it's dug into bedrock, 12 foot deep here. So I started putting these fixed triangles on it. And I figured before anything up there could come down, these things got to disintegrate. It all goes into bedrock. The heavier it gets, the stronger it gets. Compression. Engineering without money is ingenuity. I ain't got no money. I'm a high, I, I don't have no high school or college degree. I've got God-given talents to build things. And there's buttresses. This is the elevator tower, three flights of elevator. Uh, this was one of the, the first arch was that big one over there. Then these four arches come later. And it started out as a stone cottage right there. There's gonna be a one room stone cottage. My dad was, I thought he'd be part of it. I started in June of 69. And then people start calling Rockworks the castle and that's how it got going. All of these beams are trees off the property that I cut a flat place with the uh, uh, chainsaw like a sawmill before, before I had a sawmill. And here in the last uh, 15 years, I built my own sawmill. And uh, this, this is the bottom level here. This is the part that my dad built, this part only. There's a different style in rock work, thinner walls. He'd scrape the mortar line. 
and everything else is mine. You can see the difference. And I thought it was going to be a two-man project, and, and but it wasn't. He, he soon quit. Why, why, uh, quit. Too much work, beer and cigarettes, that was his thing. It, it's just too much like work. And uh, I don't drink. Uh, I drink a little at, at lunch, but I don't smoke at all. I never ever tried a cigarette. And I have the work ethic, God-given talents, and that's, that's what's going on. Okay, we'll go up the round tower steps, north, northeast corner tower of the, uh, or the uh, northwest tower of the main castle keep. And this is the second level area that's going to be the museum and library. A lady from, uh, from the Panhandle of Oklahoma, uh, Jack and Dolores Chappie, they have a glass shop in, in uh, close to the Colorado border, and they don't, she made these windows and donated them, and I installed them. Now, these other windows are, are fundraising memorials. There's a lady that lives in Greensburg, Indiana, and uh, they donated this window with the Pepsi, that she's crazy about Pepsi Cola. A Rodenbeck's, this one right here. Paul and Ruby Rodenbeck. That, that one means a lot to me. And who yeah. was it, Jim? They're great. They're, well, they uh, lived in the same town that my dad grew up in, uh, Greensburg, Indiana. And they, they start coming out of here because Paul's brother lives in Colorado. And they found out about the castle, and they come almost every year. And we go out to dinner, whatever, and then they sponsored that window. And that's a good ad. Maybe I get Pepsi as a corporate sponsor. Why not? Why not have a corporate spot? How about Walmart for $50 million? Uh, just put their money in a high-yield account and just go on the interest. They keep the $50 million, and we just use the, use the money for about uh, 10 years and renegotiate, renegotiate every 10 years. And they still got their money, and, and I got about $5 million a year on 10% interest for cement, gasoline, building materials. And then maybe they'll f figure my castle is worthy because it is back into, the, back into what everybody understands, money. Okay, enough of that ranting and raving. I get to doing that and going nuts. Oh, here's the neat item, the uh, blacksmith weather vane. The local blacksmith, Cord Parmenter, a man who lived, a man who lived at Peterson Air Force Base up by, up by Peterson in Colorado Springs, commissioned, commissioned Cord to do this many years ago. And it's quite a piece. A little bit different than the finger I normally use, but it's still a good, good piece there. You know. To cross over to the next tower, and this is a, this is this tower is Roy's tower, named after our little boy that got killed in the woods playing. I had another name for it. I call it the Oval Office because it was kind of oval, making fun of the Oval Office. And then I got a better name, uh, Roy's Tower. And uh, my my little my little boy Roy, when he was four years old and three and a half. He'd take people at this tower and uh, really happy about what was going on, and he got killed in the woods playing. And... Okay, we'll uh, go on up the third level with this other tower here. Oh, no, this is the end of this one. We got to go up, up this way. I forget my own project. All of these pillars, as it turns out, every one of them, and I didn't engineer it out, it just, just the way it worked, come over strong points down below that goes all the way into bedrock, not over the center of an arch. And, and uh, these diagonal arches give tremendous strength in earthquake and everything. I think it hold, hold up pretty well. I just seen a documentary on the National Geographic cha channel called The Secret Towers of Tibet. And they're shaped in intersecting, uh, looking down on them, they taper, and, and uh, they're, they're shaped with intersecting rectangles and uh, five-pointed star. So, it, so there's five corners that are like buttresses. And they've withstood all them uh, Tibetan earthquakes. For, they, they've, they were built like seven, eight hundred years ago. Okay, now we'll head on up the uh, staircase here to the third level hall. And uh, this hall will be used for dances, weddings, art shows. Charity fundraising, there's no rent, it's free, just like the admission, free, donation box basis. And I really appreciate you guys being here, that's important. People need to know this is here.
I don't want to get into the intellectual voodoo on that, but uh, the, the form should be foremost and take care of the function so that it's a smoothly uh, run thing, so there's no chop off of energy. Is why that's important. Uh, sure, you got a duty to try to do something, but uh, uh, the aspect of what you look at is the pleasing to look at, where you're going to make something that's logical, like an old cook stove up there uh, roasting peanuts. No, you see what I mean? from um, part of the spaceship from the Apollo mission, decontamination chamber. This is part of the door. And that's called the Moon Maiden. There was great concern uh, about bringing contamination from uh, the moon back down in some bacteria or microorganisms. So there were several types of contamination chambers built. And this was one of the main ones that was uh, built and it weighs 32,000 pounds. This is beautiful. This is, you can hardly see it now. Everything has to be redone. This is the moon. He's got eyes here, moon maiden. And he's got my birth date on it. 222 and I won't tell you the rest. <laughs> this is his first political piece. This is a manure spreader. You pour it down here, the manure, you spread it on out, and this used to be painted gold, and it's a bearing that's falling apart. And it has to do with all the wrongs the Wisconsin state did to all the farmers. He's got on Wisconsin, and he's got a line way up here for sin on the bottom here. And this was, believe it or not, 5-5-1989. That's a pretty old piece. Farmers loved it. <laughs> okay. This is 1990. Hearts of Hearts. TOE, Thomas Owen Every. This is my signature here with the heart. It's going through the left ventricle. And then this does move, it's got a motor in it. This is the piece that Tom got really hurt on. I was painting it, flammable paint. He was welding at the top here, and his clothes caught on fire. And when he got off the light, he was hollering for me to help him, and he got second and third degree burns all over his chest. Because when he got down, I pulled his shirt out this way to put out the flames. That's what gave the flame. And uh, it was pretty awful. He had a lot of months of um, therapy. A lot, a lot of months. But you wonder, when you look at this and this, um, how much he had in his heart for artwork and how he jumped from this and jumped over here and then over here again, too. It's the only one quite like it. And it's got a, got a nice mouth, of the, of the mouth on it. And it actually holds a bowling ball. <laughs> it's the only one I made like that. But I'm great on making birds uh, with different kinds of bodies on them, whether are they birds or are they fantasies? Well, birds are non-threatening to start out with. I like it. They can fly up and go anywhere. They, have a, they seem like they can fit in anywhere, if you know what I mean. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. We're coming through a lot of trauma at eighty-nine. That's what it's about. A lot, a lot of trauma because uh, um, there was five years of real trauma after we came out of Madison, real trauma. And this is, this is what it's about. So that's the hearts of hearts. I stay.
Yeah, Epicurean. That's the oldest piece here. The Epicurean is the oldest piece. The Epicurean? Well, you're, by the time you're getting all this done, you're getting cotton picking uh, hungry, aren't you? So you had to have something to, to uh, get your, feed your gut, and if you wanted something that, that'd be working, that's the most exotic backyard barbecue that I know of. Yeah, I don't know of anything quite like it, but. Tom asked me if mine was big enough, you know, these little round ones. And I said, it's pretty good. He says, I'll make you something a little bigger. This is what he made me. You, you pick up your sandwiches there, and uh, uh, Evermore, I know, likes uh, popcorn, so he's got old factory popcorn machine. You pick up your popcorn there. This is my popcorn stand. That goes on here. Gonna make a lot of money. So that's my popcorn stand. Yes, uh, the Overlord Master Control Unit is uh, sitting out there, and there is seven uh, magnetic lightning cannons. Uh, then there's a cannoneer station, and so they're looking out with periscopes. If anybody on the ground is going to be threatening this operation, they can shoot with a, those really like laser guns and hit you in the butt, not to kill you, but to make you smile, you know. And then the next, you go up to the next layer, and, and it's, it's kind of like a, a big round egg up there, and which the master control guy is sitting up there looking at the gauges. When you take the difference between an artist and a scrap dealer. A scrap dealer knows it's about 50 cents a dollar a pound. To an artist, it's worth thousands of dollars, as is. And that's what they wanted me to do, is to just get rid of them. But for Tom, you can't replace it. It's an artist. Heading for the third level. <coughs> Here's the third level hall again. <coughs> I'm a wrought iron worker. I quit high school, I went to work in my dad's wrought iron shop. So I wanted a steep roof that would be strong and, and, and it would shed all the water and the snow, which that one does. So I designed these uh, wrought iron roof trusses. And uh, with no cranes, the very first roof truss is buried in the front gable, buried in the rock. You could set an Abrams M1 tank down up there if you set it down easy and that would hold it. If you dropped it that far, it'd probably just keep right on going. The inertia, the momentum. But this, this is stout. Them, them stone trusses, that real stout. I was nervous. I, I, I'm paranoid about a lot of things, whether it's going to be damaged by the weather and stuff. And one summer around the 4th of July, I, just after I put it in, big storm developed down here with golf ball-sized wind-driven hail. And it was on a weekend with a lot of people around. And, and, I, and I heard the hail coming sound like a freight train. And I told everybody, get over against the walls in case that glass breaks. And that was pelted with golf ball sized ice. Didn't phase it, just bouncing off it. And I was elated. I was going running around screaming and hollering. The hail was piled up. They had to get a, a, a winter snow plow to move the hail off the road. It's rock touching rock. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So this is real stout because and, and mostly all, always rock touches rock all the way up. And one good example here, my dad built this part only up to here. You see the different style. My dad built this part right up to here. And he did thinner walls. He drank a lot of beer and he'd hide the beer cans from my mother. He'd put them in the wall. In the wall. It's, full of, it's full of beer cans, little hollow places. So I did my thicker, heavier walls on top of his thinner walls. And I thought that'll be a good test of strength. If I got all this heavier weight up above thinner walls and these these walls hold up and don't crack and 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 cave in then all my heavier walls that are heavier at the bottom are even stronger than this one so this is my peace of mind tower a good movie has uh, theme music a movie ain't worth a damn without theme music and uh i'm no actor i'm real and this is greater than the movie so why where is the orchestra and the band off in the woods playing you know when i when I start moving around, there should, should be a drum roll. 
and they should strike up the band and all that kind of stuff. I mean, for Christ's sakes, if you go, if you go to a movie, it ain't worth a damn without music, right? <laughs> Let's, let's walk the outer balconies. We haven't done that. Uh, the way this works, it's real strong even though there ain't no columns on the edge, is because right under our feet are fixed triangles in wrought iron scroll work, mild steel. No scaffolding. I did this all hanging from the road. People come out here and say, how do you know this is all hole up? And they'll be out here and I say, watch this. And boy, they'll go, oh, it ain't going nowhere. I built it. This is a chimney tower. And it's gonna be quite a controversial artistic chimney because it's gonna be called the Titty Rump Rump Roof. It's gonna be sung to the Lone Ranger theme song. Titty Rump, Titty Rump, Titty Rump Rump Rump. I'm gonna build a, I'm, I'm making a wooden form in, in, in chainsaw it, a form of uh, a woman with a neck, no head, maybe for the better, no offense, but a headless woman, no arms, but four boobs and four butts. And the legs in down the chimney down here, and all the smoke's gonna come out the neck. And if it ain't enough volume, it'll have four smoking rumps. And I wonder how Custer County Commissioner's gonna like that. This is, my, this is one form of scaffolding. I put the hooks in the rock work, wrought iron hooks with wrought iron hangers that hold the boards. Then as I take the scaffold, I leave the hooks and the hooks can hold flower pots for decoration and stuff. Well, let the castle build itself. This castle's its own scaffolding. The castle's its own crane with a pulley at a high point. As long as you can maintain a pulley at a high point, you don't need no crane. What would a crane cost? $50,000 for a few days, plus the operator? You know, no wonder if things are in debt and can't pay off this and that. The uh, medieval fire-breathing dragon uh, made out of discarded stainless steel hospital trays. There's 4,200 pop rivets holding it together. The lower jaw hinges, the lower jaw seven foot long. The uh, two eyeballs are Michelob beer bottles with uh, light fixtures behind them. The nostrils uh, is a chimney for a stove down below, and the mouth burns a, a fire-breathing dragon, a propane and kerosene or high pressure. Hi, folks. Good. Look all around. Help yourself. Big pardon, Paul. You want my oratorio or my conversational? <laughs> On the great hand of God I stand and proclaim my innocence. Well, uh, when I teach, I teach hydraulics and pneumatics and applied fluid mechanics, power mechanics. Though the sinless hosts of heaven had foretold the coming of this most desolating breath. I've uh, been a heavy equipment operator, heavy equipment mechanic. I've been an electrician and a plumber and I, you know, grew up on a farm. The work of uninspired man, its quaking thunders, its firmament clogging rottenness, his own achievement in the due course of nature. You you know, a jack of all trades, that's me. Yet had I not believed it, but had said the pit itself hath furnished forth this stink. My emotions are very close to the surface, and heaven's artillery hath shook the globe in admiration of it. Uh, that's Mark Twain, by the way. I, I relate good to the people who are doing something. Uh, people who are, are just diddling around, I don't want to have much to do with or just talk about something, I, you know. Uh, many a times in the industrial wrecking job, before they even got the contract out, I would have had the damn thing off the property and gone. Well, uh, just about every bit of video I've seen on him where they've sat down and interviewed with him, he talked about being an industrial wrecker, a salvager, you know. And uh, when you are done, if you're good at it, there's nothing left. It's just a flat plane, an empty canvas, if you will.
and he's always said that it, it left him feeling like, hmm, something's wrong here. And so, I mean, I'm guessing he's been a pack rat for a very long time and that there would be interesting tidbits of stuff he would find as he was disassembling something that he couldn't get rid of, just had to have them, you know. And this way he decided to try to make something, to put it together, and apparently that's how it all got started with him. And yeah, I do know as much, of, we may be in as many 30, as 35 books and uh, then there's been quite a few fine documentaries that we've been associated with and uh, filmmakers that were uh, here from Ripley, believe it or not, or Discovery Channel. The best one I happen to like was the History Channel because they associated me with the scrap people. And this is a guy that looks at something a little bit different. Now, uh, you know, so all the scrap people talked about uh, they're recycling automobiles, airplanes, and, and computers and everything else. Now, they had me kind of tied on the end of that on the History Channel, and they keep shooting that over and over again. I, I feel kind of honored to be associated with my people in the scrap industry, so that makes me real happy. Well, you asked me how did I, how did I meet Doc Evermore. Well, we have a mutual friend, and... Um, uh, the, the mutual friend is the kind of a guy who likes to go around to junkyards and stuff like that. And of course, you know, here we are, right? I mean, when you look at this stuff, as I said, I'm a techie by training. When I first saw this, his work, you know, I see the Forever Tron. I see it in its, it, the way it is. I see it as an entity. And then I step in closer and I begin to recognize, oh, that's a dynamo. Oh, that's a steam engine. Oh, that's a water pump. Oh, those are gears. That's a worm, you know. Tuk, 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 tuk. And that draws me in because I begin to take it apart and understand the constituent parts in it. And that, that's the thrilling part to me. Uh, now, this stuff here, uh, the one has been working on here for the last 20 years or so or more, uh, is just a case of, uh, of looking at the stuff and seeing a energy force within it and respecting that and and building pieces out of it but other people enjoy that because some of them can identify whether it's a bunch of old farm machinery in there and oh my gosh now it's used as something else there was nothing used as it originally was intended for well after i met tom at the party there in menominee i talked to roger and i said we got to go down and see this guy's stuff we just have to go down so I introduced him to Roger, and of course, Roger is an artist in his own right, and, it, and we came up here to uh, look at the stuff here at the site, and Roger had a video camera and was walking around, uh, looking things, shooting things. A Couple of weeks, maybe a month later, Roger said, you know, we gotta go back down there. We have to go back down there. I said, okay, just taking it as written, you know. And he said, because when I was showing the video that I shot to Barbie, his wife, he said, it's only then when I found out, discovered what he was about. But then as I thought about it, I went, well, you know, Roger's trained as a classical studio artist. Your work is here, it's this, you know, your, the, the biggest thing about you is the perimeter of your studio. And to come out here and go, whoa, you know. And so I, I really understood, I think, that to bring it down into a manageable image on the screen, that was like, oh. Epiphany, pop, 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 pop. The, the other thing that blows me away is just the sheer mass of work here. I mean, I got a lot of what I think are good ideas, but I don't have the gumption to carry most of them out and they evaporate into space. Look at this, it's here. I mean, my God. <laughs> We are at a family gathering and my brother came in and he said, you know, it's pretty clear to me that that guy, that sculptor friend of yours is special. Because the other day I went out and looked at my scrap iron pile and all I saw was scrap iron. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that really is the difference between Tom and most of us mortals, you know. Yeah. Take, would you take us to your, uh, your absolute favorite? Oh, the absolute favorite? Got to tell you, it's this hawk over here. But the most fascinating part is if you get up close and look at it, what the, 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 the forehead and the cheeks would be, that's the three jaws. And obviously this massive sort of uh, 
Victorian era, all these rivets. See these massive chains in here and massive shock springs and all these things. And I look at this thing, first of all, the compound eye are all surveyor, surveyor marks, you know? The littlest kid can walk up here and basically put this mask on, step into the mask, you know? And trust me, the kid inside me right now is soaring through the sky. This is just amazes me. I think it'd be a catalyst of inspiration for other people to uh, feel good around and the energy forces on every single thing that uh, is involved in that particular Forevertron set or whatever it may be is good. And then we have a few thousand ton of material that other young people could use up. and. And uh, I, I kind of was uh, in this kind of a business where the word of recycling was even involved and, uh, what, and got cast out from industrial plants. Uh, not only uh, that's, uh, anybody can do anything with scrap iron, brass, copper, and steel. Okay, I'm in Roy's Tower. I'm, I'm heading up to the fifth level of the squared tower. And uh, in this tower, the steps are cantilevered from steel reinforced concrete. I pour one at a time. In places, the big end goes in first. In other places, the little end goes in first to make it go straight or to make it curve one direction or another. That's just another style of building a tower. Some of the towers got steel steps. This tower's got concrete steps. Cantilever, the compression of the Weight of the wall holds a step in place. They actually stick out with no supports out on the other edge, other than this steel hand-built railing. My, my uh, father, Willard Bishop, was quite ingenious when it comes to making equipment out of junk parts and stuff. He was a scrap metal man, too. He'd take just stuff from junkyards and, and build a whole shop full of stuff in Pueblo. He built a little hand-operated can that would make this, this bend without heating it. Okay, I'm uh, coming out of Roy's Tower. I'm coming out onto the fifth level balcony. Another wrought iron balcony. It's up at the five levels high, and it goes into the square tower. Well, nobody, nobody's been hurt here. Uh, there's been no lawsuits except that criminal lawsuit where they're saying that my son and I beat up the mother of the bride, that we shot up the whole castle with guns. I'm not hurting nobody here. And for them to try to railroad my family, because they couldn't control me with zoning. You know what, I, you know, I can get the word out without ranting and raving too. And so people say, well, it's only a matter of time. Well, everything's only a matter of time. I can't control somebody that, that will, will jump this thing. Hal, you know, I, I, I might consider, I might decide to, to climb over the damn thing and, and jump it myself. I mean, hell, but the trouble with it is, if, if, if I decided to jump this tower, you know, if I if I decided to if I decide to jump this tower, you know, I might land on some fat politician and screw and put him screw him up, and then I might have a lawsuit to uh, take care of him, and I might survive and have to pay for this fat ass politician the rest of my life. Hey, come back over, Jim. Tell me about it. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> See, they're safe as far as the integrity of my building. I mean, uh, now like like this, you know. <clears throat> See, I can't. I'd have a hell of a time trying to break that. Now, on the other hand, if they were horsing around and some, some tall guy, some guy pushed a guy and he fell over, I can't control that. We think since they're... And the worst thing that person would be doing, even worse than the guy getting killed, they'd be generating government that would try to pin something on me or, so, or them, generating, we got too goddamn much fornicating, copulating government. Back to the point, Jim. They tried that interstate's full of people traveling. There needs to be an interstate sign down here. I'll park that truck down there. I'll park that truck with a sign with flashing lights, 72 hours of movement. Put another truck with a sign. Castle 24 miles. They, I don't give a shit about their rules and regulations. I'll do it myself. Burnicate them bastards. There should be a crowd of people here right now. It's beautiful up here. Where the fuck are they all? God damn you motherfucking bastards. This is more important than the Royal Gorge or any goddamn thing else. <laughs> hey Jim, tell, 
Oh, this is the fire-breathing dragon, which a lot of Christians think is some Satan symbol. Thor to take them too! It ain't no goddamn Satan symbol. Satan don't have it no more. I got it. It's mine now. Satan don't have the dragon no more. I took it. Anyway, what's the structure underneath the tomb of the dragon? Or actually, I'm sorry, back up. Tell me about what happens in the tomb of the dragon. Well, the dragon is a fire-breathing dragon. Uh, it's been uh, propane and kerosene out the mouth. Uh, my son Dan, the guy running the, uh, getting ready to mill the, work the sawmill and unloading the log, He's making a device that I'm going to install uh, that'll be high pressure air and gasoline. But isn't this ridiculous? Look at this. A beautiful day like today, and nobody's here. Well, we're here. I guess that's the important thing. It don't matter what you call it. Who, who gives a shit? The important thing is you just do it. Okay, I'm going I'm to enter the square tower and head on up. Here's the first bell in the tower. There'll be many bells. I'm going to ring it a little bit. Okay, now I'm getting ready to climb out through this opening onto the unfinished chimney tower. Chimney tower, fireplace, three three flues for the three fireplace down below. A flue here, flue there, there. Smoke. What do you think? I don't know it's your call, Jim. What do you think? Oh shit, I'm gonna go on down it. Okay. Get ready, get ready to follow me on down if I miss. Oh hell, that's there ain't nothing to it. Look, Ma, no heads! <laughs> See, if the ladder goes, I still got the rope. If the, and that's a good rope. You think OSHA would approve that scaffold, that ladder? Anybody down there? That one didn't survive. The first one did. Yeah, I'm real proud of this work here. This is coming out good. Walking across the bridge, heading north, heading for the uh, pause tower, the uh, geodesic sphere tower. Will uh, It's on uh, five ball bearings. It rotates. There'll be sheet metal fins on the outside. As it rotates, it'll spin alternators charging batteries and be an orbital generator. There's 300 triangles. All three of these, all three of these triangles will be quarter-inch tempered plate glass, see-through mirrors like the roof, only mirrors, reflective. And on a clear, a sunny day like today, as it rotates, it'll reflect sunlight down and into deep space and all around. All these faceted mirrors, attracting aliens as well as people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross on over. I'm going to cross on over now and I'll come up at the top of the square tower right from where you're at. It won't take me but a minute. Heading up the square tower. There they are. Continuing on up. I'm right up here with the lightning rod now. Hey, I'm right on top the wheel. Right on top the spire. Look, Ma, no hands. Yeah, this is up in the air. It's really a good view all around here. I can see a couple of deer over there, a couple of does. 
This is about 9,200 feet above sea level at 200 feet above the highway. I don't wait for women. They always expire. Their shadows turn ugly. I'm going to head down. The wind's cold up here. Too windy. I want to be an artist, my own blood. I want to be a stagehand riding in the mud with your wild arms, your warning face. I got a bad religion. A poor This little park here happened because Tom needed a place to weld and is very, very far from the art park, but it'll be pulled together. All of this artwork is at a 12 degree angle. I didn't like it at all when it first happened. I'm, I now know when I'm sitting here and watching it again, two years, three years later, this is pretty spectacular. Um, totally, completely different than his other artwork from the park, and it's it's more straight lines. Everything in the park really has swirls in it. He's got circles here, but um, it's a different kind of a circle than the swirl. Everything he has here has um, writing. This one has the writing in here. The other one's on the base has the writing, and. Uh, this is a piece of land we kind of have an interest in purchasing, hopefully. Now I'm supposed to be standing at a 12 degree angle out here, so I should, I should be standing this way, okay? I have to stand this way, because this is a 12 degree angle. I can't do it. <laughs> this is the meditation chair. I'm supposed to sit like this here. That's just strictly for meditating and thinking. That's all it is. I have mine at the park that rocks. Tom doesn't like that, but his mine rocks. And then the other person stands, sits on this side. He calls it the lover's chair, too. <laughs> That's quite the bearings. They're pretty wonderful. This one is the the inside world 102803 that means he's making them making them about two to three days apart uh, this is forever Tom oh. totally completely they belong with the UFO 12 degree angle they belong these belong with the UFO it's called the twist conjecture, okay, of Forever Tron. And then he has the two hearts, which is my initials. It's Eleanor Every. It's got two E's there and two E's there. And then he's got his signature on there, which I didn't know this was set up this way. It's a compliment. They're beautiful. It's the same, two hearts. I've been honored here. Didn't know it. Okay, this one was built 111103. Soul first, S O U L and F I R S T first. Your soul first. 111103. And there's my initials again. Two hearts, which you'll see is E E. And then it's the Forever Tron and Tom and the two hearts. Wow. You didn't know that those were there? Had no idea. Really? Uh-uh. What does that mean to you?
means his heart was with me. <laughs> This is called the Night Watch. And uh, this is 102603. In a game, again, the same setup the hearts, the date, and his special signature, which I, it's a little different, but it is T O Every, Thomas Owen Every. So. This is quite an experience, seeing it in this light. Quite a nice one. What have we got here? Rock Bell. No wonder. Look at here. <laughs> it's movable. This is something we would all have to watch out with the children. They'd have fun as a teeter-totter. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got emotional. I didn't realize it. <laughs> I'll say he's a true, genuine, reincarnated pirate. He's a doctor evermore, um, just like um, Sir Henry, I said, uh, Hen what they called a uh, pirate Henry Every. Yeah, that's Tom. And I mean, it just, you can just picture his whole back story of his life. There's the Tom here, and then the pirate comes in, and there's the Tom here, and the pirate comes in, and there's the Tom here, and then the pirate comes in. And it took me 40 years, 40 years, to realize there's no changing this man. And we need to work around him and work with it. Uh, it's not been an easy road. It's been a difficult one because of it. Pirates get into trouble. They create trouble, and everybody else picks up the pieces. So that's part of why we're kind of keeping him away from the finger parts of this, trying to get this settled now, because we don't want the pirate to come in here right now. Not right now. He can do enough trouble at the nursing home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about how it's not so much that he wants to be known as like some eccentric artist, but as for the, the metal salvage. Would you tell us about that, please? I think he felt more like a man. Much more like a man. Um, strong, a very strong person when he was in the industrial recce. And I don't feel he feels that way in the art field. There's just some things that um, doesn't give him that power. Doesn't He doesn't feel it. And yet you, you look at his artwork, you know that's power. But he doesn't feel it. And he wants to be recognized as the industrial wrecker in the scrap field. Tell us uh, what you're doing. Well, I got this 
See, I'm really upset with the castle builder down there. Oh, I'd call him dad if I wasn't upset. Because since I was about that big, I've been listening to him say when he starts a wall around the property, he's got equipment. He's going to get equipped. Cranes and shit like that. What's he got? A Nissan truck and a Harbor Freight winch. <laughs> oh, wow, nice crane, dude. Really, the hardest part is getting the tree in here. It's not easy to just go out and grab a log like that when you don't have a skidder or something like that, you know, logging equipment. But I'm trying to build a crane on this thing and I got a bumper winch and then I'm gonna take these logs that I salvaged off of some property over here. I got 50 bucks a tree to take these ones out. Put them on the truck and then haul them down to the sawmill. I've been living, we've been living in that structure with that looks like a two-story shack, cabin, whatever, since I was uh, about eight. I like to create things. This place gives me the gives me the freedom to take my mind and the junk that's on the property and build something out of it. I got what I, I like to call my little operation Berserker Engineering, because the kind of the Berserker thing just whole fits me, being Bishop's son, you know? And I did build things like fire breathing units for the dragon's mouth. But I enjoy being up here, it's great. I went through a period where I couldn't be here for a while. Things had happened. Little brother got killed when I was running a chainsaw up here when I was 15, he was five. And I took off and went and explored the world, you know, throw your old oats or whatever it is. And uh, the worst thing I found out was I don't get along with people. I'm an anti-social socialite. Got to have them, but I don't like to be around them, you know? <laughs> I'm kind of, I was a, I've had drug addiction. I'm addicted to speed and crank and crack and the speed. Once you're a speed addict, you always have that speed behavior. You know what I mean? And it's, it don't work well, really, up here. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, you gonna finish this when he's gone? I don't think I'm not crazy enough to do it. I really don't. I'm not eccentric enough. I know that. I'm. I have my own quirks, but and I'm not the worker that he is. He's. I don't know. I guess the problem with not allowing your kids to help you do what you're doing is they get lazy because they don't have to do it. Plus, I have two children that I'm raising on my own, and I'd rather be here, living in it, somewhat impoverished and raising them on my own and now making a million and having some pervert screwing them up, you know? How many people do you know that don't spend but about maybe two, an hour and a half a day with their kid, you know? They've got some teacher out there that's doing it. And then to breaking that strap, watch. A lot of people think he's really angry and the truth of it is, he's, be, he's performing. Because he, over the years we've learned that if he puts out a real energy into his into the work and, and like that and rants and raves, the donations are triple. How come that fucking art ain't putting a light taking? Fuck art! I don't give a fuck about art. He can go to fucking hell. And he can I shove mean, his log splitter up his fucking ass. The motherfucker. The judgmentalism of a free bishop is just fucking wonderful. Everybody's so well, it's bad if they don't build castles. God damn right. To where if he comes up and sits around, hi, oh, yeah, how's it going, nice day, and all that. They like that too, but people pay to watch suffering and, and shit like that. What do you watch on TV in NASCAR? You go to watch NASCAR, you don't want to watch the guy that wins. You want the guy that's, the guy that's wiping out and wrecking the wall, and then you go on talking about him dying for the next 25 years, you know? <laughs> when our little boy was killed, then it became Roy's Tower because that little guy was only three and four years old and people would come in the yard, he'd grab him by the hand and say, you got to come to the top of the castle, top of the tower. And it was the highest tower at that point. And he would, he'd climb up those, what, 80, 80, 90 some steps? Yeah. 30 times a day with people and show them the top of the tower and come on down with them. Now, before you got to leave, you got to go in my mama's gift shop. So, uh, then, of course, when he died, then we named it Royce Tower. The depression came on with the little brother because I've been cutting firewood up here since I got my first chainsaw when I was 13. Castle builders don't have time to heat the house, you know. I've been doing, I've been doing a two, I've been growing up for quite a while, and then my little brother went everywhere with me. And there was a wind-blown tree across the road that um, 
When the wind blows them over, it brings a stump up, and the roots are sticking up a ball of dirt. And I went over there to cut it up uh, one day after school in, in the beginning of spring, and he decided to crawl in that hole and play in there, and when I cut it loose, it just went back in the hole and suffocated him in there. And you still never get over that kind of shit. You just learn how to deal with it. But I've learned to love it, hate it, live it, you know. Some days it's all right. This place is a real psychological experiment here to show you what's wrong with the world. Open your eyes to everything. The first time the castle made the, any kind of national news was the APB wire service. For my little brother getting killed by the tree because it was a freak thing. My dad had a real problem with that, you know what I mean? He felt that he was worthy at that time, and he definitely was. Got the log, the tree, on the sawmill here. First thing you do is you take and you slab it, turn it, square it out. The reality of it is I learn something about what I'm doing every time I do it, you know? So you might learn with me. It's gonna be cold right now, it's gotta warm up. I just do my work and, you know, like when our little boy got killed, I just work through it. I can work and, work and cry, work and talk, work and rant and rave. I just kept working. Uh, no, no need in trying to run away from her or nothing. I just worked through it. And I still haven't completely got over that, but it takes time, but it's healing up. Here's your raft of matchsticks and the Nile's all you see. And every day is like a penny loss, like that dime I can never find. But a soldier's joys are simple, and all things pass in time. When everywhere's no longer home. This I find if I'm mad at Tom, this is the only way to do it. When Snick him on the cheek. Oh, he would start with the stories. He would uh, change the story instead of uh, being a little boy who uh, was playing with electricity in 1800, then all of a sudden it was some mysterious, mystical thing somewhere, some other land. He has his own way of explaining his sculpture pieces and leaves people stumped. Is that true? You know, their curiosity has gone to a certain point, and he's taken them off into some new storyland, <laughs> and nobody knows which, which is fact or fiction anymore. He changed the story on me, and so I, I, I'm not lying to them, but I don't know totally which story Tom is really going by. I guess I have to say that Tom had too many years of being the pirate, and I had no idea what the name was for it. And then he had a lot of problems paying his workers. So it was very difficult to fight anything. And um, so that was my job here. Absolutely nobody was allowed to work here unless they're paid the same day. He said that he had a, uh, he says, you know, Eleanor, I never thought about the wage part of anybody. I'm so, I was so busy enjoying building things and tearing down things and that, that that wasn't his front, you know, thought, is to make sure everybody was paid for. And I, I can believe in that because that is where his thinking was. Um, it got him into trouble. 
part of what happened in the Madison one was the House on the Rock. Uh, the only compliment I ever got from Alex was he leaned back and he says, man, this is really something. And then he, uh, then he uh, walked away and he says, well, it costs a lot of money. Well, and that was the profession of Alex Jordan is to divide and conquer and separate people and make them fight with each other. And that was a pretty, pretty bad stage of the business. And that ended the business. 1982 was the end of the business. 1983 is, was the start of the artwork. They haven't had any creative people down there uh, since 1982. Uh, that's when I left. But there was nobody down there with any vision or imagination. And then the trouble went with Tom is totally anti-Texas. And that wasn't his concern. And that got him into trouble. I lost the house. And uh, then he got into trouble with the house on the rock. That ended up he had to go to jail. And he was there for eight months. What happened? Um, contract theft. But that's actually not what happened. It was so organized and so controlled. Um, we had no attorneys to really fight at all. It was, it was a pretty, it's a movie. It was a pretty horrible, horrible scene. And so that's why he started the project up here in 83. But at the time that I was losing my house, he was up here doing artwork. The children and I are cleaning out the house, 32 rooms, out of panic, out of everything. And then in the, um, January, I think, 4th, I think it was, when they came in with big trailers and just took us completely out of the house for two weeks. Judge let us go back in. So I lived in that house from the January till June with no furniture. No furniture, no blankets. Um, children's clothes were gone, books were gone, everything was gone. That is what Dane County and the city of Madison did. And we had no way of fighting it, but it, I, it's Tom and his attitude of don't pay the taxes. I refuse to pay the taxes. Whether it's sales tax, whether it's house tax, um, whatever the taxes, he's not going to pay it. Oh yeah, he's he's got his different ways of looking at things, you know, and, and he kind of uh, tries to influence people his way, you know, and it may not be always right, practical or that, but you know, it it makes an impact. Uh, it, during a, a, a time frame, and there's different time frames. It was a, a, a dress time time frame, and. Uh, where he wanted to get away from all the uh, uh, lawyers and politicians and uh, the uh, upheaval in the, in the cultural world and, and get directed onto something more positively. And I, that's what was uh, pulling me away from uh, more, make more money in the scrap business and all that stuff. You end up with different uh, purposes. And I took a that that particular road at that time. January 4th, we moved in. February 19, uh, Tom was put in jail. Then Thayer was arrested also. Why? He, he just, his heart broke. And he just stood up and screamed in the court and said, uh, it's not true, it's not true. And I had to go clear across the room to get him and take him out, out in the hallway. Well, then he really got mad. And I was between him and the door. But he never hit me, so they put it in the newspaper, and Ant was hit. They arrested him, and... Is that true no, none of it was true. Tell me about some of the things you've had to do then to move in some of the, the hardships. Uh, anything that you've had to sell, or anything that's been quite difficult here. At the park here? Um, I sold the Big Bird, and that's really what I wanted to keep as a park piece. But I can't keep all park pieces now. I have to bring in the money. And I don't want to lean on anybody. I don't want to borrow. I don't want a mortgage. And it means that if we have the resources, then I need to start tapping into it. How difficult was that then to have to sell the Big Bird? Well, maybe I didn't sleep for about three, four weeks. The gut feeling um, that something part of you was going. And then 
the gut feeling was, how in the world was I going to take that apart at 20 degrees? But it went to a wonderful spot. Uh, Visionary Arts Museum, Baltimore, Maryland. Pretty nice spot. And that's why when we move this park, it'll be honest. All the way down the line. I'll deal with the pirate. He's working on me too. Growing up here, I've learned that the biggest valuable lessons you learn in life come, life come only from the bad things that happen to you. And, you know, there's been a bunch of bad shit happen up here. Okay, on the, uh, you, you want to know about the, uh, the incident of the uh, August 24th, 2002, the wedding party. These uh, particular individuals that uh, come in here for the 92nd wedding, they were coming here real early in the morning. I actually, against my rules, I told them they could have some beer, uh, wine, champagne toast, not to get drunk. Showed up in the morning, me, I was up here trying, I was in my, I put myself in self rehab, really. Get away from the cocaine, I'd filed bro, uh, bankruptcy, lost everything I had. Come up here with my wife, who was really the one who had the problem. And in the process of fighting her, I just ended up joining her. She didn't make it happen, but I did it, you know. And she was up here recovering, and I was up here recovering. And they show up at 6 o'clock in the morning with kegs and booze, and I'm sure there was drugs. They rolled, I was in Pueblo doing something. My son lived here. They come rolling in here like real early in the morning, woke up my son with loudspeakers playing, a bunch of noise, wanting to unload kegs of beer and use the elevator. Well, we unload the beer. That's probably a, a mistake of ours. Just we should have kicked them out right then and there. And just went on to walk all over the place all day long, disobeying every little thing around here that's signed to keep children under control. Don't drive in there, in and out. About run a couple people over or some. Well, anyway, they partied for 14 hours. Uh, it was getting dark, and they were proceeding some of the drunks to fall down the steps, getting hurt. So I ordered them out of here, and they start arguing. I got two phone calls about all night rave party, wedding rave party at the castle. I just come out and told them, you guys are out of control, you're gonna have to go, and they refused. They're accusing me of charging in on them and beating up the mother of the bride with my fists. My son also, we both, we, we both beat her up. We both pulled guns out of our waist and gun, handguns, shotguns, rifles, and shot up the castle and shot at them. They start cussing and screaming at him, so I run up the steps in defense of him when the women went, retreated off the balcony into the hall, I went into the hall and one or two guys on each arm grabbed me, restrained me, defending the women. I start thrashing around so they couldn't put, push me off my own balcony. The mother of the bride got right in my face and as a headbutt, she, got, she split her lip with a, uh, left a tooth mark in my hand, in my forehead, her, her lip was bleeding, she split her lip. And uh, they're saying that I hit her with my fist, with, in the face with my fist, beat her up, Three, I just got to grab a shotgun and uh, shot off about three or four rounds out the back window, totally different direction. They, it wasn't even all that scary to them. It couldn't have been because one of them, what the hell is that? My dad, well, that's a shotgun. You might want to be getting going. But I've learned in this world, it's the person who calls cops first that gets the favor of the doubt. The government jumped on me. They couldn't control me with zoning. So they tried to put me and my son in jail for about 30 some years on, on about eight, 18 criminal counts on me, 17 on my son, false charges. Well, I was thrown in jail with a 50,000 cash only f uh, five days later, taking my little school to, uh, girl to school in Pueblo. Well, I agree, I recklessly endangered him when I let him in here with booze at 6 o'clock in the morning, you know. I'll do 30 days just so I remember not to let him come driving in with a keg at 6 o'clock in the morning, you know. I, I believe in respecting the land and the people, that, the people that you have to deal with every day. You don't have to give them anything. You don't have to make, you don't have to do good for them, but just respect the fact that they can do what they want, breathe the air they want to breathe, and in the same, they should in turn do the same for you. And this guy got us off, I had to do 30 days for misdemeanor, no, no felony charges. I was starting to wonder if karma worked until he showed up, you know what I mean? And you just wouldn't look, he wouldn't think he was a lawyer when he walked up, hunting coat and... Oh, are they, yeah, I'd love to defend you because we put a sign out there. Dad, I, Dad has a sign that's up here somewhere that said, lawyers, politicians, bureaucrats, you should be ashamed of yourself. Get a real job. Well, he put another one next to it after that happened. Prove me wrong. We need a good lawyer. 
And this guy come in and said, ah, I'd love to. I just love to go into a little town. Nobody knows me. Come in, they think I'm a hick, and we walk out the back door after we've kicked their ass, you know. And he wanted to do it for free. I told him, no, no freebies. I'm sitting in jail 30 years from now because it didn't work. I don't want to feel like I didn't put something into it. And I'll pay you whatever you want, but I'm not going to pay. I can't pay it now like you would want. My testimony on the stand, I just come out. He's like, let's just be honest with him and tell him who you are and what you do. Because you're up there trying to heal, you know, and you got this party up down there. I got up there and, I, you know, I've been a coke addict to the freaking jury. And the, the DA takes and scratches out that paper and turns the page. Broke into house and stole crap. I've gone to jail for all this stuff. And he gets, keeps doing this. When it goes down to the end, you know, he's cross-examining. He only had one question for me because I, everything he was going to throw at me, I just put it in his face, you know. I learned from that thing that um, honesty might not get you anywhere generally in, in when you're out on the street. But when you're really in a bind and, and your life is dependent on it, it's the only way to go, man. People, them 16 people respected the fact that I was honest with it. I was pretty, pretty adamant before that there was no freedom left in America. The system didn't work. And now I'm adamant that the only freedom comes in education. I mean, a six-day, five-day trial was really nerve-wracking. It's an it's experience that was awful, but at the same time, I don't think anybody in America should not come past a certain age, 18, 19, without sitting in front of one and watching it happen. We wouldn't have half the problems because you wouldn't be afraid. You would know you're still innocent until you prove you're guilty. Uh, the only time I've ever really been in court is with this uh, false charges on this, uh, these criminal charges. Usually I, I take the, I, I'm in their county, at courthouse at county commissioner's meeting reading constitutional laws to them, which really pisses them off when you, when you, when you know more than their lawyer knows and they're paying the lawyer. The local district magistrate, Julie Marshall, who's active attorney number 6629 with the state supreme registry, active lawyer, conflict of interest. She's not a judge, she's a magistrate, and she's not immune to prosecution. Judges are, but lawyer, uh, magistrates ain't. She put a 50,000 cash only. I couldn't bond out of jail. That's a violation of Amendment 8 of the Constitution. Cruel and unusual punishment, excessive bail, presumption of guilt to proven innocent, extension of jail bars. But there ain't been nothing after that. Okay. Once we learned how to make them answer to us and paperwork, they backed away from us. I'm innocent. A, a, a criminal's hands don't look like that. My hands are honest hands. The open road's a policy. It's a title that you saw with me. I think it's a dynamic thing to have a, a sculpture uh, which is made from other sculptures, uh, which all the stuff here is made from the Industrial Revolution, but nevertheless, uh, uh, it, it pulls these multi-levels is what I'm talking about with this thing here, too. And all this stuff has got pretty much many levels in it when it comes to it. Well, I'm kind of a land pirate, collector and hoarder of metals. Uh, that's uh, brass, copper, stainless steel, and, and of course steel for scrap. So, Lord only knows how much it cost, but it's a historic thing, and then I, I think our value systems are screwed up anyway, whether it's pounds or yens or anything else. So, I, I, I just, the pirate part about it, my, my relative was a pirate, uh, he took all kinds of treasures off the high seas and stuff like that. But uh, people throw way too much stuff away, and so you might as well just... Uh, and they don't pay any attention to what it is, you know. Just get rid of it and bury it or something like that. So these are buried treasures locked into art, and there is tons of them. Well, we never intended this place to be a location where we are going to uh, put it anyway, but. We uh, haven't ever figured out where we're going to put the, the thing down. But the most important thing is what you did this morning, uh, what you flew over. Well, it has to do with energy. So when, when you come into to the park, you, you got to look at it horizontally. It's got to flow energy-wise as you're walking along. That's one way. But if you've got this other dimension, uh, then you zero in on Earth and then uh, you keep going down to, well, this is a point here, let's say if it's in Wisconsin, you can see this whole other picture, kind of like the uh, uh, Peruvian principle where the, you looked at the stick man for the 
uh, air, you know, sending messages to who knows who, you know. That that heart down there uh, is a, a inch and three quarter inch piece of uh, steel, and you look at it, it's got a lot of uh, uh, bruises on it. You know, it's got a lot of strange things that's happened to it. And I cut it into the heart, and the heart is has two ventricles, the the left and the right, and the the arrow going through that heart goes into the right ventricle, pierces the heart. That shows the uh, that happens to everybody. You have a broken heart or something like that, and you can put your hands on that and you uh, meditate with that piece too. We got those those hearts on there. They have two meanings. They have L and R E E E. When you tip them that way, or they could be interpreted two hearts, which means open heartedness to all. You follow me? She's been a some very supportive uh, individual all along, and put up with the uh, with things, and also sacrificed a lot of things for uh, eccentric type of goofiness. You know, uh, well. Um. I'm Put fine. your hands up on top. Or your hands are cold? No, I'm fine. When they do this, do it. Okay, but we're trying to talk about something here. Thank you, Elmer. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you guys can see the humor of things. <laughs> Certainly, because it, 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 it takes kind of a goofy crazy people to do stuff like this. I mean, other, other people wouldn't do that. You know, they go down and sit down at the pub or something like that, or look at the, uh, you know, football game on television or something like that. And what's it like seeing uh, seeing this continuation? Where do you think it comes from, right off? Well, uh, uh, he'll tell you himself that he works on stuff that amounts to something. And, uh, you know, he can, he can build anything. And, and he's a terrific son. You can't beat him. You can't. And uh, uh, he, he's, he's also an engineer, and then he also has got the artistic aspect about trying to do something, too. But uh, he'll, he'll laugh about his dad and say, well, uh, uh, I, I, I work on the stuff that brings the money in. Yeah, well, that, well that's true. I, I haven't been monkeying on chasing dollars for 25 years, you know. So I don't know how that happened, but I'm just putzing around with a few thousand ton of stuff, you know, and, and that's the end of that. Troy, Troy Oswell, when we worked together, it was the best, best thing in the world. And so he, he laid all the stuff up, but he stood behind me like a movie director and to get all the, the um, you know, the motions and stuff and the energy right. His stuff here on this side is the, by far the very best. But uh, they're, they're all put into these pieces, and, it, and the energy comes through all that stuff, but they got his energy in it, and they got other energy in it. They are the very best here. There's no question about it. So, Even when I, when I train uh, young people, tell them not to impose their will on uh, already existing peace. They uh, have a tendency to uh, want to reshape it or or cut something off of it or something like that. And it, and I'm also taking and looking at the uh, the energy in it. Whoever engineered it before, that was for a purpose. And that engi engineering and energy carries forward. And if you don't impose that, and you just pick up whatever the little piece is and hold it up like, oh, well, that looks good, maybe it look better this way. And then you add some other little piece on to it. Uh, you're not, not imposing your will or saying that you know anything, uh, but you, you pick up all those energy points, and when it comes out, it'll look at you. There's the gentleman that I that will be in this documentary also. His name's uh, Jim. He's the person who's doing the uh, the castle. Well, I, I would say so. He knows little uh, rocks, and, he, and he, he picks up on the reality that that, that rock fell down, and he can see that it would fit into his place. He may take it as it came down. And so he picks up the labor of rather than reshape it, he's taking it in the form that the last thing happened, it fell down. I heard him on uh, one film talk about that. It, it, uh, he likes it back there doing that all by himself, you know, and he don't have the big cranes and he has to 
uh, use uh, mechanical lifting stuff that's uh, kind of primitive. Okay, I'm just kind of getting this cable out of the way. I'm going to pick up this big rock. I think I'm going to try to pick up this big rock. It's kind of taxing the crane a little bit overkill, but I'm, uh, I kind of do that. I always overload my truck. I overload everything. I like to overload things. Uh, well, if, if you get it done, you get a lot done. But you could, if you make a mistake, it's going to cost you time and everything because you got to fix things in. But let's see what happens here. And see, so, you know, any, anybody else would be using an electric winch or something. This works just as well. And it's, it's slow and steady and safe. Unless it breaks up there and hits me in the head. Okay, I'm going to try working the other one now because this one is... Uh, I've already, I've already bent the shaft right here. If I pick that rock up out of the ditch, that's a rock that somebody can't run into. You, run, you know, if that rock rolls down the mountain and lands it on the edge of the road and somebody runs into it, they could get killed hitting a rock like that. So if I pull that out of the ditch somewhere, which I did, I'm doing a public service and I'm building a, a national monument at the same time. Coming right up. Look at that sucker go up. You know that, when I get that up here, that's called progress. Every night's a ball and chain. Oh, without birth or growth or blooming. Every night's an open I'm to show I'm feeling Okie fucking dokie And every night's a vanquished mile A race that's run but never winning Oh, every night's a crooked smile To keep the chorus girls from singing Oh, every night's a ball and chain What a crooked prospect Too many idle flies to help Fall through a wicked face <laughs> wasn't in there this morning. An hour ago, it wasn't there. Can you imagine how heavy all this stuff is? Can you imagine the weight of that? It's astronomical. For every night's a fallen chain. I'll count the cards to wax the urge. The orphan says to me, behave, son. This bottle is by a lesson learned. For every night to fall in shame. Anything for an attraction, anything to get their attention, because I'm actually doing something here. As a little nobody, a little nobody with no money, no rich daddy, high school dropout, working for a living, a true story, and then somebody like you comes along, and that, I consider that important because people need to know the stories of what's going on all over this country. There's all kinds of projects called folk art. But people need to know about uh, Bottle Village, the, the uh, uh, different things in Wisconsin, uh, the, the uh, metal sculpture gardens. My friend uh, Lottie uh, Charlotte Kemp up in Colorado Springs at the Broadmoor. I've kind of, I'm kind of winning the battle here because I, I've learned how to enter U.S. District Court and file on them and make them answer to my paperwork. But he, he, talks, he talks about it being a one-man project. In the true essence of the whole fact of the castle, it really isn't a one-man project. It's a one-man construction. He has yeah. built the castle, but the project is more than just what you see. Peaceful common law remedy and uh, being your own clerk and secretary and her doing all of her publicity and things she did running all around what me is her worst enemy saying we well, can't afford to be running all over the country somebody needs to run the gift shop he used to tell me that i was going to run the wheels off the car i was going and to wait then, the then, then i says what are you buying all this film for it's expensive well the the history somebody's got a document i used to take it. pictures with this little silly camera uh a lot of black and, and white she turns them. them into slides 
and he used to get real angry at me for buying the film to take the pictures. If I hadn't, we wouldn't have the beginning. Then we start doing slideshows for schools, going around with mm -hmm. our slideshows. Children love them. And uh, I, I'll still do that, but nobody calls me because they're afraid I'd go nuts and start ranting and raving. <laughs> I don't get any more calls on that because they say, oh, no, we don't want him in our auditorium. Okay, Paul, uh, what we're looking at is the uh, east f uh, front face of Bishop Castle. It's a result of all my work by hand. It represents freedom, liberty, and justice, my God-given talents, the uh, American way of life, actually the world way of life as a free person in a free world. That's what we're all supposed to be. None of us are really asked to be here, but a lot of people do the best they can. They use their God-given talents. There's a, lo a lot of real good people. Most people are inherently good. They just get caught up in things and they try to keep up with the Joneses and they try to, you know, they got to pay bills and all this. But I raise a family. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, this is my uh, epitaph. I won't need any, uh, I won't need any tombstone or anything like that. I want to see how long I can live, what I can, what I can uh, do with my hands. A monument to hardworking poor people, make it a monument to myself and a lot of other people. Ongoing, when I'm dead I'm done, so I don't want to be done anytime soon. Well, one man can't really make a difference, but you can if the public's with you. It ain't one man, it's a, it may be one man's work, but being the public's coming here, maybe I can educate people as to what I think it'd be the truth, as far as I know. Maybe it'll be a, pl a place of a little bit of education. Uh, the one, one man can make a difference, but it's gotta be through uh, a lot of people. Power in numbers, power the public. I don't want your, your salt water And I don't need your bread Cause all I want is another little spoonful In the palm of my hand You want to see my, you want to see my You want to see my heart now You want to see my, you want to see Yeah, and it's, uh, I'm sitting in a wheelchair, 
uh, on this is exact thing, and I got some people. Where are you from? New York or where are you? Los Angeles. From Los Angeles, with a with a filming camera on me, taking it in the middle of a goddamn snowstorm. Can you imagine that? Oh my goodness! Well, I'll get right off the telephone. No, but that's where I. No, I ain't being a star. I'm I'm crazy. For God's sakes. I'm doing all the fucking work! What, what's, what's Let me get the sun. I'm doing all the fornicating work! <laughs> when them bastards can work harder than me, then I'll respect them. But I don't respect anybody except somebody that works. They can stuff their money up their ass. It's all certificate of money anyway. It ain't even real money. What do they need money for? Just build factories and, and hydroponic gardens? Build toys for their people?